lovely. We're live. Excellent. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> it took me a while to type in uh, what I was actually doing today, but, but um, that was quite a funny process. Okay, welcome everybody again to the Art Corner. You have joined in with one, the only, Miriana Persakis, aka Mim. And today we're doing a live demo on a still life, which I've prepared behind me. Um, using oil paint and a palette knife. So now a couple of things of course before I begin is I want to run down with just the technical stuff and remember yesterday if you caught my live video I want to start to give you guys the value that I suppose not a lot of artists or perhaps tutors talk about and that's that emotional qualitative aspects of art that um, I feel are an incredible incredible important process when you learn how to paint. Um, some lay of the lands, of course. Um, again, remember, I'm the only one filming this and I'd love to take questions and be able to respond in the moment, but um, just not possible. So please feel, feel free to make your comments and I'll definitely, definitely get to your questions. This time around, I figured out that um, we won't stuff up episode two of my Facebook Live. So um, hopefully the questions and comments will all appear once I post the video in my um, page and in my feed. So, okay, now, what I want you guys to think about, of course, when you're doing still life, from a technical perspective, you need to think about your composition. And this is really, really important. Now, I've lost one of my things. I think I've got it in here. Um, yep, there it is. So, from a composition perspective, I've only um, put in a small sample here, A, so that my camera is able to catch it, and B, you know, I'm able to complete it in a, in a quick enough time. The bigger, of course, you're painting, the more time it takes for you guys to, for me to complete. And you know, you don't want to hang around for like three hours. I mean, you want to, you know, I'm good company, but you might not want to do that. So composition is key. Of course, there's an incredible amount of information that I can give you on composition. My, the things that have helped me in particular, I've started looking at Fibonacci sequences and of course, um, the golden ratio, the golden mean, phi ratio, all of those terminologies, all exactly the same. And they have aided in how I you know, begin to structure a composition, both still life portraits, landscapes. So please look into that phi ratio, P-H-I, or the golden mean in artworks. And um, if you, you know, search for those terms, you'll find an incredible amount of information. So that's one thing. Now, what we're doing with still life, of course, is, uh, again, I don't know everybody's time frame points in their journey, beginning, middle, or, or super advanced. But in painting anything, or particularly oil paints, you begin from painting from the back forward. So think of it as a layering system. You start off with the background, then whatever would sit in front of that, you paint that next, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. And of course, as you're keeping that in mind from a technical perspective, you're also starting off with putting in the darkest darks first, um, particularly with oil paint. Otherwise, you don't ever start putting in lights because you'll just muddy them up and you won't get that um, bright, bright, crisp highlight. So you always start painting from the dark and layering it forward. Um, the other thing too with still life is this. We're painting a painting that I absolutely loved and it has incredible memory for me and I'll talk about the emotional side in a minute. But when you're doing still life, consider the following. Um, with a light flower, for example, in this case we're painting um, pink, uh, cherry tree blossoms with a light flower you're doing a dark background and with a dark flower always do a light background so that's really really important the other rule that I follow with still life is that the background uh, tone or the color of it has to have some sort of uh, neutral or nature or natural tone to it you know for example um, pending on composition but just to make it easier for you guys I'd make the tonality of my background like uh, an earthy type color. You know, I wouldn't go like a, a fuchsia pink, for example, unless you're going, like I said, in a different direction. But to keep it that impressionist style, you want to be able to have a neutral, neutral background. Otherwise, again, it will skew and throw away your tone. So just keep that in mind. Um, you know, I normally have backdrops that I use. Uh, in my still life setup and I just work with three. I've got a light one, a neutral one and a dark one and they all fall into a warm category. You don't know what to do with the backdrop or where to get it from, go to your local haberdashery in Australia, it's Linkraft, and just pick out a couple neutral 
um, pieces of material and then you can start to see how that can play with your still life setup that's really really easy now from an emotional perspective and this is where I really 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 love telling you guys the information incredible value for me um, I think it's something that um, I you know if I could put it in a ball and show you I really would love to do that but at the moment words in my body language hopefully will get that through the subject that I'm painting I mean for me personally I draw in and, and, and connect to what actually took place before I began painting that still life and this is where the nugget is this is where I imbue my emotion and I start to you know give you guys or paint or feel the good stuff um, how I came about to get this particular um, cherry tree blossom branch was from my local park and that you know in the southern highlands they are prolific I mean they are everywhere in spring so we went for a walk and you know it was a whole story um, it was a late summer evening or spring evening um, really nice night it was a, it was just something that was personal and I thought you know what why not grab a branch to put in a glass of water and when I came home and I thought this is just so my you know dream of going to Japan and sitting underneath those beautiful beautiful um, cherry tree blossoms and so because I already had this tiny Japanese vase at home when I put that together the flowers and the vase it just it evoked this sense of um, wonder this sense of ex, you know exploration and what would it feel like to be in Japan what would it feel like to to stand underneath those trees and so that's what I then uh, go to that's the place that I paint from the technical side is is like I said that's an easy process and you can spend six months every single day how to learn how to paint and, and you'll be able to do it it's that qualitative part that's really really important so as I'm, I'm going to, to, to demo the painting today and talk to you guys about it what I want you to do is listen to why I do it and I'm gonna do my incredibly best best um, process ever to be able to give you that because I have to engage my left brain which is my you know technical and my lovely touchy-feely right brain and so merging the two sometimes ends up sounding like gibberish but I'll definitely do my best to give you guys all that information the last piece of the puzzle that I always uh, I keep forgetting to tell you and my students ask me about is how do I know what color works with what now here's a simple cheat sheet if you want to call it that everyone's forgotten about the color wheel Ta -da! now in the color wheel bring up closer where am I there I am what you've got up here is it gives you a uh, incredible assistance direction um, uh, cheat sheet process of telling you if you spin it around right you'll be able to see that that color and that color are complementary and they would work really really well harmoniously in your artwork you've got a complementary split complementary process and a um, tetrad um, guideline so if you do get stuck and you want to do something different with your still life certainly fall back onto the um, color wheel it's incredibly incredibly um, easy to use and so that's the best way that I can tell you you know how do you know what colors to use with what the remainder of course comes back to your mixing um, experience and how much time you've spent mixing and creating your own personal tones as I started off I said from last week you know primary colors are the best process to learn on of course and so I would definitely recommend that you spend as much time as possible into developing that okay so I'm gonna bring in the easel a little bit closer to the camera because I'm gonna be behind it getting all my colors and start the process of showing you guys how to do the still life so bear with me while I move this forward pretty good I think that's um I'm hoping that that's not too dark no? okay, here we go. fantastic now as you can see I've already primed my um, canvas paper and again that's just simply to be able to give you guys a much better indication on um, you guys being able to see the tones otherwise it's just a little bit tough to see that let me just see if I can bring that down there we go okay so with any oil painting of course again uh, I want to uh, you know make this statement uh, you know drive it home basically please start with you know doing a quick wash 
don't go thick straight away unless you really have that experience otherwise you will get frustrated and you will you will definitely definitely um, uh, muddy your colors and you'll go back to you know square one so just remember start with light wash which is what I'm going to do right now and block in um, the actual image and then we'll start to do the um, palette knife so I've done a quick um, uh, a drawing if you'd like and then I said whitewashed or, or washed it with this um, green grey or it's got I think it's got antique grey on top so remember we're gonna start off with the colors uh, with the dark colors now again um, it, it looks pretty one-dimensional and we're gonna obviously attempt to, to make it to stick out and come into a 3d format so I'm going to the first thing that I want to do is I want to be able to just let the eye know that there's the edge of the wall that sits up there and give that um, a, a vase if you'd like a bit more of a grounded feel at the same time um, there's definitely a shadow that starts off from this side and just projects out and again just a, a real simple uh, nothing too too drastic now what I've done with this is of course broken it into into two sectors in, in, an, in a sense that the top half is going to be my my focus but the irony of it because I you know I love the, the the blossoms but it's the Japanese vase that in this particular composition became my focus purely because again of you know the sim symbolic meaning behind it all now also you guys can't see me but I've already pre-mixed um, colors and that's again just so that I can um, be able to demo this painting in a, in a far more um, efficient manner versus if I was painting this on my own I'd probably be here for about 10 hours but um, we only got about 40 minutes so <laughs> bear with me okay so I'm going to quickly now add that that color that you saw by the way was um, in this particular one I've added Payne's gray but it was Payne's gray with a bit of ultra and a tiny tiny dab of, of cadmium red so um, I've just um, made that dark and then obviously added a little bit of white to that again these are dabs these are not big um, value changes and then I got this purple color so the whole composition and what I'm keeping the whole composition in is in a um, pink purple tone and that's purely because of um, the I want to add harmony and that's purely because of the pink blossom so I don't want to take it away from uh, from that tonal value okay so again quick quick blocking and I'm sure you guys can see um, that the vase is coming out really well now so you can see the actual shape the other thing too that I, you know I always start with putting through a, um, a, a block is again the, the, the further you go into a painting you start to reassess um, every single step you know where you're at and the funny thing is with the with the brain at least with mine anyway um, it always changes in, in what it thinks it should do so I'm quite open to um, you know making mistakes if you'd like so I'm never too um, concerned that you know the final color that I put in there is going to be the end, be on the end all. So I'm, I'm quite okay with uh, being able to make a mistake and then correct it as I go along. But at this stage of blocking in, I just want to be able to get some color down and see, you know, what the painting's telling me. Um, I know that that's kind of like a fluffy thing, and people think, well, what do you mean? What what the painting's telling you? Um, the more a variety of colors that you put in the more the actual composition starts to tell you you know what it needs for example you know the bottom part of the painting might be a bit too dark the top part might be a different tone um, so everything becomes almost like a push and pull between what you've last put in and your next tone that you're going to put in so um, that's like I said I'll never be too afraid to to make a mistake or to correct it and particularly with oil paint Oil paint is incredibly, incredibly easy to learn on. Um, a lot of people are scared of it for some reason. I don't know what. It's maybe they've kind of been scared of at school, um, but it's it's the most easiest medium to learn learn on. So um, yeah, kind of don't don't be afraid to you know just bung it in as I keep on telling my students. Um, okay, so there's a quick outline um, of 
the vase or, or my Japanese little um, creation there. And I hope you guys can see that. I mean, I'm, the lighting might be a little bit weird at the moment. Um, I might just move this further up and see if we can correct the... Um, yeah, okay. This is what happens when you're live. You never really know what's going to take place. And um, I need a cameraman. <laughs> I think I need a cameraman. Okay, I think that's a little bit better. There we go. So just want to get rid of that reflection from there. So now that I've got that in, what I want to do is, um, remember, we're, we're layering or we're going... Um, from back forward. So I want to go into the um, uh, the flowers and just block them in. Again, once I put them in, you start to see how they're telling the story with what the background is, and then that will make a little bit more sense. So um, with the flowers, I've actually got an extra red in there. So the normal red that I normally have is cadmium red, but with um, these particular flowers, I chose to go into a cadmium uh red deep i think yeah cadmium red deep and it just has that uh, nicer cool and yet warm feeling it's a really weird um weird uh color but yeah cadmium red deep really works well for this so again with the flowers i start off with putting in the, the dark first um and i know that there's a couple of different dark spots around there and we're going to keep it fairly loose and so not too much focus on, you know, uh, or concerned about what shape the flowers are. This is quite a, a simple impressionist style of painting. So I'm going to go to the next colour down and I've added a little bit of white into that dark mixture, which has given me this um, lighter pink, if you like. So I'm going to be very, very careful not to um, obviously go over my darks that I've already added there. But again, they're just a guide. So I'm not going to be too concerned if I um, happen to go over them. Okay. So again, this is just so that I, I get a better idea of... I think you guys can see that. That's really, really cool. Um, I get a better idea of how the background and the flowers are all um, working together. Now, with the um, actual vase, this is a tricky one because um, the, remember I said to you last week that whenever you lighten a colour, if you weren't aware, if you add white to any of your um, mixes, what you'll find is that you know straight away your tone, your, your mix that you've made will take you into the cool zone. Um, and that that's, um, in this case, quite welcome for me because up here, I want this side of the vase to actually be a cool tone and then as I'm curving it forward because the light's coming from this side, that's going to be my warm tone. So in this case, in me adding a lot of white to this particular um, uh, side of the vase, it's actually quite good. So um, in this case, it's really, really, really nice. Now, again, because this vase has got um, a blue pattern to it. It has that um, Asian feel of a porcelain feel. Uh, again, remembering that the process that we're painting, you know, from the back forward. So I'm applying that same technique, to, you know, understanding in the vase itself. So I'm going to leave those flowers right to the end. So in this case, I'm going to put that cool um, white all around there um, and just again to outline it. Now, what starts to happen is, you know, the brain, I remember when I did this the first time, my brain kind of went into this, this is too white, um, it's not working, you need to change the tone. And so you have to trust that whatever color you're, you've begun here, it's actually cool um, to the point that as you're merging it to the other side, it will you know, end up to be a warm tone. So don't be too concerned and too, um, I guess, worried about what it's appearing to look like now so again remember keep it quite light this is only a blocking um, i'm not focused in using my palette knife and this process for me in particular once once i do the um the um blocking stage with a brush i'm even at this stage i'm wanting to understand how everything's working out and how is it that it's um, sitting in terms of is that working is that working you know I'm starting off with um, light flowers 
Is my background dark enough? Um, how will you know the so-called table sit as I'm painting this whole vase, etc., etc. So these are all the questions that I'm asking myself. Um, once I start to use a palette knife, then I go into that you know uh, loving emotional um, aspect of painting. But for the moment, I'm really just adjusting you know to see how the tones are working so hopefully you can see that i'm not sure the tones of this white is are quite subtle but now i've gone in into the next white which is um, a little bit warmer this here is quite gray and again just a quick block in um, all i want to create is that 3d effect of that curvature of, of that vase and give it you know a nice um, so, you know that soft, subtle feel that you have in um, in porcelain. Okay, so I'm going to add the lightest light, but not actually complete it. I'm only wanting to really just block it in at this stage and say, you know, let's just put it there for the moment and see how it's behaving with the colour next to it. Um, you know, before we kind of say, look, it's final. So. Remember, at this stage, it really is just a quick blocking. Um, it's almost like paint by numbers, to be honest. But um, I want to know, and I want to let my mind feel and connect, you know, to the emotion of this particular subject. Is it, is it what I initially started off with? Is it working? You know, is 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 that emotion going to be in there um, with what I've just started? So that's really the ideology here. Okay, so now that I've got that quick block in, and, and um, now I'm going to just slightly add the blue. Not a lot, because if I add too much blue, um, actually I might leave it. It's going to muddy my, my, my white in there. I might leave that, to be honest. So we'll leave that for um, the last, last process. Oh, let's get a bit more tissues. Okay, so I'm going to go back and focus um, on that background. And I'll show you what I want to do, because I'm just mixing colour by the way at the moment, um, that background for me is starting to, to be and feel a little dark, okay, so what I want to introduce is just a little bit of uh, variation in colour, so that might, that might be something around there like that, okay, um, see how that behaves. A little bit better so this by the way is scrambling um, for any, anyone else out there that wants to know the technique of what that is but uh, I'm just gonna lighten that background just a smidgen um, and just introduce that slight difference in tone uh, it was bothering me actually even though even though this is just a demo I just wanted to kind of give you guys that you know idea of you can still correct and correct and correct and correct Okay, so um, now I might um, I might just get a little bit of blue and add that cool aspect, um, and this is just to kind of bring it at the back. So I, I want to add that depth. You know, that's what I, all I'm focusing up here at the moment is just to give it the depth. But you know, as I'm doing this, I've just noticed that I've totally and utterly lost that background um, dark tone that tells the eye and the brain that that's the um, the edge of the table or whatever wherever your um, vase happens to be situated so I'm just gonna put that in there for the moment okay this is as much as I'm gonna do with the brush and I think for me that's pretty much the process of blocking it in and saying yep that's pretty good I'm happy with that and then we can start to use the palette knife. So the same process now again with the palette knife is I'm going to start from the back, meaning this background and you know the flowers sit in front of that, the vase sits in front of the flowers and the background and then work forward. So out comes the palette knife and um, let's have a party pretty much. That's pretty cool. I'm excited about this. Um, okay, so with the palette knife, this is where... I get to be quite loose and quite free at this point in time because I can't do it on Facebook, but I do have music going quite, quite loud. So, um, yeah, that gets to be uh, incredibly exciting. So, again, no fee, start to put it in. 
Um, you can see how much crisper the, um, the, the purple appears over the brush. I mean, the palette knife is just so much far more superior than um, what I can achieve with a brush. It just gives me that flexibility to, to paint wet on wet um, versus continually, you know, muddy colours up. So to me, that's a lot better. Okay, now the other thing too with the palette knife, again guys, keep in mind that you will use an incredible, incredible amount of paint. Um, it, it, it's, um, yeah, yeah, you will go through a whole lot of paint. So just a word of warning that um, if you don't like doing that or you aren't able to stock supplies of, of good paint, then you might just paint, still with a palette knife, but paint smaller pictures. You know, don't... Um, don't go in and begin big, big artworks. Now the thing too here to be quite aware of, I'm painting around the, the actual blossoms for the moment, but what I wanna do going forward is I'm gonna then create soft edges and hard edges. And so soft edges give you that feeling of love and comfort and it's, it's nice and it's, you know, um, warm and, and you get to cuddle if you like I don't know but for me soft edges are just an incredible incredible um, nice addition you know to to a painting so um okay so I'm gonna leave the back for the moment now I'm gonna go and rework the actual flowers and again now I want to add um, the darks again so now the process begins of working back and front and back and front okay I'm, I'm I'm moving from area to area so I want to add the next and the reason why I'm working you know um, between the background and the flowers is to again achieve that wet into wet because the the first layer that I put in um, with the brush is, is pretty much dry even though I'm using oil paint it's definitely uh, definitely dry so that's the um, whole you know, I want to begin to put in as much paint as I can and then layer that process. So again, now I'm going to the next layer of that um, tone of pink. And as you can see, I, mean, you can, I don't know if you can guys see that again. Apologies for the, the lighting. I'm hoping that that's coming through. Okay, that'd be better. Um, the, um, the, the paint of the background and the actual blossoms are merging really really nicely and that's oh, that's just I mean, that's delicious look at that and there's something about color too if you've not explored color or you're feeling a little bit uncomfortable I certainly recommend that you dive into this whole you know what does color feel like what can I do with it you know what is it um, how can I express it on canvas I mean that's just the delicious part of actually painting for me um, so yeah I'm gonna add a little bit more of that dark in there and you can introduce it a, a little bit around here, but that that will, that will um, kind of let's think of it as falling petals. That's uh, that's quite nice. So I'm going to add the highlights just a smidgen, so that I've got an understanding um, of where my lightest lights are, and I'm going to leave that there. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now I want to come back to the vase, and again I'm just going to get a bit more tissue paper and um, start to block in that. Um, vase uh, again from the beginning we're going to do the that side up here and I don't know again the, the palette knife just makes this so nice I mean the beautiful beautiful feel of that knife is absolutely stunning now remember too when you're using a palette knife you want to consider you know letting the blade do the work at the same time think about your subject you know this this vase is not straight up down it's got a curvature that goes this way so I'm going to introduce that in there um, again the bottom part to make sure that it has a nice curve that way so now we're going to go to the next tone down which is a little bit warmer and introduce that in the middle right there there we go and the next one down so while I'm applying it vertically um, I'm also conscious that I need to make sure that I blend it horizontally there we go 
and again make sure that I work in that um, that shape of that vase and the way that it actually is it, it is it is made otherwise you'll lose the integrity of it all now for me personally I love the palette knife and that, that I can't you know you get these little bleeds around the edges that that to me is, you know is quite nice but some people want perfection so if you want to kind of learn the loosey-goosey style way of painting definitely recommend that you um, pick up a knife okay so can you guys see that that as I'm applying that um, it's it's a far more whiter um, and crisper tone and again I'm gonna just bring that side in there that way there we go whoops there we go and keep that fairly fairly soft um, yeah, that's, I think that's coming through okay and just add a bit more of that shape or, or define that vase on that end okay so like I said if you've got questions and I'm not you know my brain tends to <laughs> stop as I'm painting please feel free to write them in happy to answer them um, after the live feed um, but yeah it's it's a fairly easy process you just have to think about you know where is it that you want to apply your tones and what does that feel like now Again, if I'm looking at that composition from a emotional side, I'm loving the way colors are dancing together, they're moving side by side. This here is not working for me. You know, we haven't done anything with the bottom part and I really want to address that. So what I want to do is um, add and create a bit more of a, um, a lighter purple tone at the bottom. Um, and I think that will sit really, really well um, with what, with the color that I've currently got on there and so I'm just going to see yeah that's not bad okay so that's not bad so I'm carefully applying that for the moment so I don't want to ruin the um, composition the integrity of that vase so I'm going to kind of just touch the ends but I will smooth that later with a brush and give it that soft uh, a soft edge that purple I think looks really good um, I'm gonna keep that so as I've got that purple which is in that whole you know uh, cool family what I love is I'm gonna take a little bit of that pink because I'm quite see this is where now my emotions are kicking in I'm wanting to introduce a little bit of that in here and just a slight 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 introduction and can you see how you know I, I don't want to it's, I'm not making a case of it, but I'm just kind of saying, hey, look, you know, that feeling up here, it's now, it's now down at this point up here. And, and I like that, you know, uh, changing tone from um, where we started with the black to, to a bit of pink, a little bit of purple. I don't actually cover everything. I do leave that underpainting uh, to show and to come through. So I'm quite, um, you know, I like that personally. Some people don't, but I'm quite... Um, partial to that I've also noticed that that shadow that we've put up here has disappeared so I'm just going to add that um, and bring that even underneath so give it that you know feeling of the light coming that way so we're still working on the vase I haven't finished that as yet now I want to add the next layer on top and that's going to be um, those beautiful blues that you know that give it that um, porcelain style feel so in this case, because I've got white already there, you need to be really, really careful not to muddy the white tones. And so, again, this is why I love the palette knife because it just, um, it, it lends itself quite easy to apply it on top. So I'm going to start off with that blue um, in spots that I know is the darkest. There we go, there. And again, notice that I'm, I'm fairly gentle. Again, I'm letting the knife do the work. I'm not too concerned with being precise but I, I want it to to feel um, porcelainy if you like um, so remember again I started to say that paint from the dark to the light and that's exactly what we're doing in this case is what's the dark to light and again I'm keeping the integrity of the vases curvature going that way so that's really really important for me so I'm always thinking about the technical aspect but also to see you know, how does this feel how does it sit is it working to the degree that I wanted to and the emotion that I keep coming back to is that soft that cool breeze that smell of spring 
you know, the, the awe that you have when the petals fall on the ground, um, you know, the, the smell of those beautiful, beautiful spring flowers. It's just, there's nothing like it. I mean, that is intoxicating to be quite honest. Um, okay, so I've added the dark, uh, which is part of that, that vase. I'm going now to the next tone of, um, of where the light's hitting it. And again, following that curvature of, of the vase, I'm going to just hold it gently and curve it around. Again, adding those highlights um, where, where is, you know, the, the, the light direction is hitting it. So there's another one there. That's quite nice. Yep. So it really is all about building layer upon layer upon layer. Um, and once you, I mean, I love these thick chunks. They're just awesome. They really are just delicious. Absolutely delicious. I'm going to go to the next tone down and now introduce a lighter blue of the vase up here and one down here like that. Uh, perhaps even maybe put in an extra flower here. So, so for me at the moment, even though I don't think it is, there is a flower of the vase, that it doesn't exist in there, I'm going to add an extra bud up here just so that we get rid of that space, that negative space for the moment. That's actually looking quite good. I hope you guys can see that. That's, yeah, that's not bad. Um, now I want to come back to the, the flowers because I'm now seeing how this is not working as well for me. There's just not enough highlights. So we're going to go back into the, um, um, the actual pink blossoms and I'm going to add just some highlights around here. Okay, that's quite nice. There we go. Can you guys, yep, you guys can see that. Um, and fill that gap. I'm not liking that. The other thing too is that I'm noticing there's a there's a bit of a separation between the vase and the flowers, and um, I you know you need to kind of join the two and let them know that they're friends, and um, they can kind of mingle together. Again, add more a bit more of that tone. Okay. Oh, I don't like that. that. That's awful. Sorry. See, get rid of that. <laughs> Did not sit well. Okay, that's better. Okay, and I might just add a little bit more of that um, highlights at the top up here. There we go. That's looking quite good for a, I think a 20 minute <laughs> demonstration. So the ideology here now is I want to start to go back into that emotional place. And the emotional place for me has to come back to you know, where are the soft lines? What can I do to improve it? And so, you know, I'll give you guys a couple of directions. I can either, you know, start to soften these lines on the side up here with a brush and just lightly run that through to, to give them a softer edge. Or I'll, I can use my palette knife and uh, this is where people freak out. Give it movement in terms of... Uh, something different if you like. I'm going to add that white and hold my palette knife and just drag it across and give it that. Can you see that little flicker there that I've just created? Same thing on this end. I can hold it down lightly and then drag it across. So this is where that feeling starts and you start to move that you know, in, in, into this particular composition. Maybe even with, um, I might even just take a different tone up here. Introduce something different, yeah that's nice, nice colour, up in this section here and maybe go into a light and introduce that um, into uh, the background and then move those tones into the actual uh, petals themselves. So I've just gone a notch down from that purple and added a little bit of white and I want to just introduce something different and again this is just a, a movement thing more so than a necessity like I don't need to but I want to um, yeah that's pretty good okay so I'm gonna leave it there guys I'm hoping that that kind of has come through um, I can definitely play with this so much more and um, develop it at a much 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 more refined state I'm gonna move back the easel so I can talk to you guys and bring it forward okay so now okay I'm going to move that that way. So can you see how, um, you know, all of what we've just done is translating with the palette knife? So hopefully you guys can see that. There we go. 
that's pretty cool. Whoop, get away from the light. Okay, so that's that's pretty much a still life demonstration with a palette knife. And so, um, you know, if, if I was to give you guys a tip in, oh, my scarf keeps getting off. <laughs> it's a necessary tool to uh, not have my hair in my face. But if I can give you a tip as to, you know, what is it that you could um, learn quick and, and do in your studio is to say, learn how to hold and do that palette knife. Um, because the knife is actually already designed for you and it's gonna give you the work. Too many people paint, when they paint, they paint this way. They jab, 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 jab. You need to place it onto your canvas and let that knife work, right? And, and then it comes back to how you're holding it. So my tip would be to say practice and practice and practice with the palette knife. And remember, when you're painting, you're painting from the back and you're layering forward. So we did the background first, then we put the flowers in, then the, the um, vase, and then the decoration of the vase is really technically the um, item that is closest to us. So you notice I didn't actually put that in first because if I did, it would have totally and utterly muddied the white of the actual vase. So that's the thing that you need to keep, keep on top of. Um, so I'm hoping that kind of has given you a, a wonderful insight into palette knife, still life, and colors and compositions and using the color wheel, etc. etc. I hope so. If you've got questions again, please, you know, write them in. Um, I can't see anything at the moment other than what I'm doing, so um, I'd be able to uh, get to those a little bit later on. Now, what I also want to leave you guys with are the following. So, on uh, next week, on Tuesday, I think it's the 21st, I'm not sure, and Thursday, the 23rd of November, but on Tuesday, I'm going to do a live session at 1 p.m. 1 p.m. and I'm going to talk to you guys about because no one wants to talk about this uh, the failures my failures my rejections my incredible shitty mindset that I had to overcome um, in order to get to that point my own comfortability etc etc and this is really where I know you're gonna have value with this because um, no one talks about their rejections, no one talks about their failures, and no one talks about what they had to do to overcome that. So Tuesday, I will put up all the information on my Facebook page. On Thursday, the um, live stream will be also behind the scenes of what I do before I paint a portrait. Um, and this is quite weird, you know, this is something that I don't show people, not because it's strange, but simply because it's how I connect before I begin the final portrait, if you like. So I did that the other day and I thought, you know, this would be really good for you guys to see. Um, I never, I've, I've never shown this to anyone actually. So that's on Thursday, again, 1 p.m. on Thursday, streaming live. And Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, will be all about talking about those fears, those things that we don't like to talk about. But I know you're going to have value, and I know that um, you're going to have um, something to take away and, and create your own artwork. Remember, big believer, art definitely develops a really strong mindset, and um, that's the thing that I really want to explore on Tuesday. And I'm going to give you some juicy examples of my shitty failures, <laughs> um, which. Um, yeah, there's some epic ones and there's some incredibly stupid ones, but once you become aware of them, you kind of go, I need to change that. So um, Tuesday and Thursday we'll do something else. Thank you guys. Really, really appreciate you um, tuning in. I hope that was of value. Please send through your questions and happy, happy, happy to help you along the way. Um, in the meantime, be creative, be you. I always tell you guys this, you're one out of seven billion one out of seven billion like seriously there's no one else out there other than you and i can't even uh begin to understand why you wouldn't share more of you so be you create sculpt paint garden creativity can be anything it's not just oil painting and um at the end of the day it's all about making sure that you guys do what you love and love what you do thank you again for tuning in until next time bye see you guys